Hello, welcome to Shad Life. I am going to attempt to explain forks to you and more importantly, what changes axle to crown because I promised I would do this video and try to get it a little more detailed because it's very difficult to explain without graphics. So I'm gonna to attempt to do this with some graphics and show you what makes the axle to crown um, change on your fork. Um, and then once I explain that, I'm gonna show you what does different axle to crown measurements do to your bike. And I'm gonna break them both up separately because I'm just gonna explain why does axle to crown change and then I'm going to explain what makes the front end of your bike go up or down or whatever and how that changes the geometry of your bike. So hopefully this will help you if you're ever shopping for a fork upgrade or something like that, or you're getting confused between a 29er fork and a 27.5 fork, or a 29er wheel and a 27.5 wheel, and what makes them different, and what effects do those things have on the geometry of your bike. As you know, I've done a few uh, MX builds, oftentimes called mullet build, where I put a 29er wheel on the front and a 27.5 wheel on the back, and that changes the geometry of the bike pretty drastically, believe it or not. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with what changes the axle of the crown measurement, and I'll explain what the axle of the crown measurement is also so you understand that. Okay, so here you will see that I have a simple drawing of a fork. Um, and so this part right here is the amount of travel you have. And in this example, I'm pretending this is 100 millimeters of travel, right? Um, and then you have your fork legs. And notice I have kind of this fork brace drawn in there. That's important, it'll come later. And you can see the axle down here. Um, so where, what is important here is the axle to crown measurement. Now the crown is this part right at the top of the fork and uh, at the bottom of your steerer. And that is where your bearing goes. And that's where the bottom of your head tube of your frame will go. So that's why that's the starting point. And then you start from there and you measure to line up with the axle. You don't go directly to the axle because the axle is offset from the center of the fork. But you definitely want to measure to where the axle is and that'll give you your axle to crown measurement. So we'll start with travel since travel is the easiest thing to figure out here as to why your axle to crown would change. So here is our travel. And as the travel gets longer or shorter, it's going to affect the axle to crown measurement on the fork. So I will compare uh, this fork to a fork with uh, longer travel, say 120 millimeters. So what happens when you add 20 millimeters to the suspension? Well, you're gonna add 20 millimeters to the axle, the crown. It's pretty basic because you're lengthening the upper part of the fork, the travel, by 20 millimeters, and that's gonna lengthen the overall length of your fork by 20 millimeters. So your axle, the crown, will be 20 millimeters longer than it was before. So that is pretty basic. It's pretty easy to see how adding more suspension travel will change the axle, the crown of your fork. So that's pretty simple in my mind. Um, hopefully it's simple for you to understand. Where things get more complex is when we're talking about changing wheel size and even worse, when we go from a manufacturer's 27.5 specific fork to a manufacturer's 29er fork. 
So let me try to explain that because it suddenly gets more complicated. So here's something a lot of people don't know. Wheel sizes are measured at the tire. So the diameter of your wheel is from the bottom of your tire to the top of your tire. And even though this drawing is super basic, I just have a circle representing a wheel, that is the outer part, the tire, and the, the rim and spokes and hub are all within that. So now that you know that it's measured at the tire and not at the rim or any other part of the wheel, that other measurement that we will sometimes see, you'll see 700 or 650B, that's at the rim and so on and so forth. But when we're talking 27.5 and 29, we're talking 27.5 inches from bottom to the top of the tire and 29 inches from bottom to the top of the tire. So then it's easy. So you take 29 inches and subtract that from, uh, subtract 27.5 from it, and you end up with 1.5 inches. So there's a 1.5 inch difference between a 27.5 tire and a 29 inch tire. All right, now that we've done all that math, we wanna convert that 1.5 inches to millimeters. <laughs> right? So when I do the conversion, I come up with 38.1 millimeter. Well, that's a difficult number to work with. And believe it or not, different tire manufacturers, um, different um, tread patterns and all of that are going to make the tire differences fluctuate quite a bit. So to make this easy, I'm just going to say 40 millimeters. There's a 40 millimeter difference between a 27.5 wheel and a 29 inch wheel. So with that being said, let's move on to this next segment to explain how the wheel size affects how the fork has to be set up. So diameter is the entire wheel and what we need to work with is radius. And so we wanna know the difference between a 27.5 wheel and a 29 inch wheel um, when it comes to radius and that's easy because if the difference is 40 millimeters of the entire wheel and we're cutting it in half that means the difference of, in radius is 20 millimeters and so the, this becomes important because we want to measure from the axle to the outer edge of the tire. And so a 27.5 wheel will be 20 millimeters less than a 29 inch wheel and vice versa. So this is the difference between a 27.5 fork and a 29er fork. We're going to be working with 20 millimeters difference. So a 29er fork will have 20 millimeters more of axle to crown because it has to move that little bridge up so the tire doesn't hit it. And so the actual fork legs get longer in order to accommodate the larger wheel size. So the difference between a 27.5 fork and a 29er fork is 20 millimeters. And of course, this changes between manufacturers. It's, we're dealing with kind of rough measurements here, rough numbers. And so it is what it is, but axle to crown is just something you really want to understand. So what's happening more recently is manufacturers are starting to no longer make 27.5 specific forks. They're only making 29 inch forks, which is a little frustrating. I mean, I think 27 five uh, inch wheels are the bomb. Like I love them and I think that they should stick around. And if the bike industry is gonna decide for the consumer that 29 inch wheels are better, I think that's a bit silly because I do feel that 
shorter riders and so on and so forth should have that slightly smaller wheel. It just makes sense. And then you can have a little bit shorter chain stay and just kind of match the bike to the rider. I'll get into that in another video separate, but let's get back to the forks because it's harder to find 27.5 forks if you're wanting to do an upgrade and you have a 27.5 bike, right? And you can only find a 29 inch fork Keep in mind, you're gonna raise the axle of the crown by 20 millimeters, roughly, depending on manufacturers and all that. And you can always look up the axle of the crown or measure it and stuff like that. But the idea is, is you wanna keep the axle of the crown pretty close and 20 millimeters, believe it or not, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, right? That will significantly change the geometry of your bike and you don't necessarily want that. Some people might want that or may, may or may not, but in general, you wanna to try to keep the geometry within what the manufacturer has specified for that frame. So keep that in mind. Um, so why am I talking about all this? Well, I'm gonna talk about now what happens when you raise the front of your bike. I just talked about changing the geometry, right? So let's talk about what happens when you raise the front of your bike because you put either a longer fork in or a bigger wheel, or you did the combination of two, you ended up with a 29er fork and a 29 inch wheel because you wanted to do an MX build, right? But you wanted to leave the travel the same. Now you're gonna raise the front end quite a bit, right? 40 millimeters to be exact. If you go from a 27.5 fork to a 29 inch fork, that's 20 millimeters. And then you go to a 29 inch wheel from a 27.5 wheel, that's another 20 millimeters of raising the front end. So that 20 plus 20 comes to 40. So a 40 millimeter raise to the front end. What happens when you raise the front end 40 millimeters? So if you add 40 millimeters to the fork. So let's just say this is a hundred millimeter fork. And of course these measurements aren't exact, but I did these two drawings to show you kind of the what happens when you add length to the fork. So here we go. We just added 40 millimeters and you can see how everything changed. Now let's pop back and forth between the two so you can kind of get an idea as I'm popping back and forth here what happens. Notice how the bottom bracket raises, the head angle changes, the seat angle changes, all of that stuff changes when you add length to the fork. So what have we done here when we added length to the fork? Well we've slackened the head angle and we've slackened the seat angle and we've raised the bottom bracket. Those are the three primary things that have happened. Some other things happen too. your, you know, reach measurements and things like that do change. But to keep this simple, we're just going to stick with those three changes. Whew, that was a lot to cover. Um, I hope it makes some sense to you and so on and so forth because it really took me a lot of effort to do these graphics and things like that. And I kind of consider myself kind of an amateur when it comes to doing graphics on a computer. But I hope I got it to a point where it makes some sense to you. Um, and hope you understand how important axle the crown is so when you change the amount of travel your fork has or you change from a 27.5 fork to a 29er fork or vice versa um, then you're going to have these different changes in um, axle the crown measurement and the height of the front end of your bike and you can see what happens to your geometry when you change the pitch or the height of the bike so it's a really important thing that i think a lot of people don't quite understand you can't just throw any fork on a bike <laughs> and expect it to ride the same you got to be very careful on what kind of upgrades or changes you make to your fork and to your wheel size right like i know 
um, doing an MX build or mullet, if you want to call it that, is a popular thing. But just keep in mind that when you do that, you're going to change the geometry. And when I did it, I knew that I was going to raise the front end of the bike. So I offset that by reducing the amount of travel I had on the fork. So you, if you understand these things, you can understand how to make sure you keep the geometry of your bike relatively in check. It's okay to make small little changes, but you don't want to make big changes and you certainly don't want to go outside what the manufacturer recommends for uh, axle to crown length. I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.